This is Benno Juchti again, and this is segment 7 of my talk about tempo in Beethoven's music and my new recording of two Beethoven sonatas. And I'm now going to be talking about Opus 2, number 1 in F minor. This sonata is perhaps a little less obvious uh, regarding metronome markings and double beat, but not less impressive. So let's have a look at it. The first movement has the movement name Allegro. The time signature says cut time and Czerny's metronome marking says half note or minim equals 108. If I take that as a single beat, it sounds like this. That's of course playable, absolutely, even though I, though I will say that some pianists actually cheat on those triplet sixteenth notes and play them as regular sixteenth uh, notes, because this is really very fast. Now, if you slow that down to double beat interpretation of the metronome marking, it sounds like this. realize that as a result we get a character that is probably Journey's category B thoughtful. We can also um, play very well those um, phrasings in the first eight bars. Something else that we can do is to use period techniques such as the left hand playing right in time uh, while the right hand moves freely above it. I do that starting at bar 28. I'm first going to play that for you with both hands strictly together so that you can compare both versions. So first version with both hands together sounds like this. right hand more freely and that sounds like this. You'll probably notice that this creates more tension between the right and the left hand and makes the music more lively and more interesting. Let's move on from this movement uh, right to the last movement, the Prestissimo. Interestingly, this is the same time signature, cut time, and the same metronome marking, half note or minim equals 108. So, surprisingly, the Prestissimo isn't faster than the Allegro. It's the same beat, actually. So, again, if I play that um, with a single beat metronome marking, then it sounds like this. Once again, this is playable, it's very fast. Um, if we slow that down to a double beat, a metronome marking interpretation, something very interesting happens. I'm going to play the left hand only for you, and I'm not going to change my way of playing. So this would sound like this. And 
I will admit that this doesn't really sound like a prestissimo. It doesn't even really sound very interesting. And it's an example that in our way of playing, we actually don't have any variation. Um, but the important point here is that now we can add articulation and phrasing because those triplets are not legato, so they can be articulated. And as I've already said, we can add a phrasing. So this sounds then like this. <laughs> So the left hand becomes almost nervous and certainly rather energetic. If I, I now add the right hand, it sounds like this. So something energetic lively, that also allows us to really sing the lyric parts of that movement. So once again, it's a different character. It's in my eyes, an even more powerful character than in the first um, fast option. Okay. Going back to the second movement, the Adagio. This is an example for a uh, metronome marking that is already half the value of the note value of the time signature. In other words, we can take that as single beat and there is no need to change anything. The movement is, of course, very slow, very cantabile, very singing. Okay. The third movement is a menuetto and we have a 3-4 bar as a time signature and the metronome marking that says dotted half note or dotted minim equals 69. Now first of all we may ask what is a menuetto in the first place? There's a lot of research around about that and the results are not very clear. It seems that the character of that dance form depended a lot on the time, on where it was played, even on the composer's personal taste. So I guess in that case we could say, well, it can be played single beat and double beat. Single beat would sound like that. playable, of course. Let us compare that immediately to the slower version in double beat, which is like that. Personally, just like that one better because it's a very sad character and you can actually hear and emphasize those nice dissonances like this one. You hear it really well and I just love that. All right, so this was what I wanted to share with you today about historical metronome markings, about tempo, and about my new recording of two Beethoven piano sonatas, Opus 2, opus two number 1 and Opus 110. Of course, there are many more things to talk about in this field, and I'll save that for an opportunity, another opportunity. You will definitely hear from me again, so yeah. Get in touch and stay tuned. 
Following this introduction, it's now definitely time for a full rendition of the two piano sonatas by Ludwig van Beethoven that I have recorded. I can't wait to hear from you what your experiences are with that new Beethoven. If you want to know more about me and my other musical projects, check out my website. For now, thank you for your attention and bye-bye. Yeah.